back. Got back yesterday. Yes. It How was did it go in DC? Well, it, uh, I went to Washington, D.C. Uh, with uh, the Nebraska, my Nebraska delegation of the Poor People's, Poor People's Campaign. Mm -hmm. And we had a um, uh, moral action uh, Congress, they called it, on poverty, kind of uh, action on poverty, um, where we spent uh, essentially three days, one day in tra training, there was lots of wonderful music and, um, you know, seeing other activists that we haven't seen for a year or more. Um, so it was wonderful. Um, a lot of ed education. They had, um, well, I'll get into it in a bit, but uh, they had researchers that had done studies that are part of the uh, Poor People's Campaign, Cairo's Center, and Repairs of the Breach, which is all falling under this one movement. And so studies were shared. Um, I wish I had more time to put all of this information together, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, the second day uh, was... Um, super important and uh, quite an education for me. But uh, that was, uh, we went to our, our representatives and our senators offices and presented um, our personal stories um, and uh, essentially uh, advocated for policies that uh, stop um, oppressing those in poverty. But anyway, uh, let's see, I did put together a bit of a slideshow, if you guys don't mind. Yeah, man. Okay, let me and see. In the meantime, I hope people are writing down questions for <laughs> both Kelly and Dan Lee. That I can't answer. And, and um, yeah, and in fact, I need a little education. My husband, there's a little kind of faux pas that you'll, you'll see and you'll roll your eyes, but I'll get to that in a moment. Let me get to my keynote and- Oh yeah, that's better. Perfect. perfect. All right, I'm doing the best I can. All right, perfect. so this was the Poor People's Campaign Poverty Action Congress. Um, and uh, so it was um, our giant push to uh, put pressure on our representatives uh, to abolish poverty. And it can be done. There are ways to do it. And that's essentially the, the message. Um, studies were done. They were presented during this conference. And essentially, the bottom line is poverty is the fourth leading cause of death in the United States. Um, and so it's not uh, listed on studies, et cetera, um, that way. But um, it is quite tragic. Uh, and so many people are suffering, and it is unnecessary. It's needless. Um, one factoid is that during the pandemic, billionaires earned two, was it two billion dollars a day or something? I mean, as a whole, during yeah. the pandemic and profit. And here we are scrimping for you know, SNAP and this and that. And um, yeah, anyway, moving on. This looks terrible. I know it's just a snapshot I took of a screen, but um, yeah, poverty is bad for one's health. It says poverty is associated with nearly every health outcome, uh, regardless, regardless that bad health also well, causes poverty. Whoops, bear with me. <laughs> And you yeah. in there as well. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. But, uh, part of um, the health effects of poverty are the uh, living with deprivation, the stress, mental health all tossed in together. Um, poverty is a risk factor, just like um, predisposition, you know, your genes, if you have diabetes in your family, et cetera you're more likely to have diabetes. Same with poverty. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, but poverty is never listed 
as a uh, cause of death on death certificates. Mm. Um, it it should you know very often be included in a way, one way to look at it. Um, so yeah, and I can't reach the rest, so we'll we'll move on. Um, but yes, the the studies were amazing. Um, I can certainly put in the YouTube notes and on our Discord um, links to the studies. Um, actually, if you um, would you be willing to do like an hour on this or something? You could book it in and do a proper. Perhaps not right now. That would be fun. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I mean, I mean, <laughs> Just... prepare one and. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I do. Here, I'm gonna stop share for a moment if I can. I've lost my. You ever lose your cursor when you're sharing a screen? Oh yes. So you know, I'm in that situation here. Yeah, here. Mom. Well, All right, here I am. I All right. But um, that's when you curse your cursor. Exactly. Yes. Swine. Dang nabbit. But um. <laughs> One of the things that we did receive in uh, from the Poor People's Campaign National is this amazing national fact, fact sheet, and it uh, has a lot of the information um, that we took to our representatives, but also um, is valuable for anyone to use. Um, uh, in 2019, I'll just list a few. Uh, 2019, before the pandemic hit, 140 million Americans were living in poverty or just one emergency away from economic ruin. So, and we've got what, 330 million people in America. So almost half, mm. half. Um, and they're invisible. In the richest country in the world. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, religious and moral texts are clear that making policy that does not protect the rights of the poor and puts the cause of the wealthy first is evil and wrong. And I did uh, sit in some of those offices and I'm not religious in any way myself, but I did I did sit, tell these staffers that, um, you know, these policies are immoral. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, um, and if we do not want to enable this wrongdoing, we must speak out and stand up against it, which means simply that all of us, all of us Americans need to just not put in the work that I am and go into these conferences and all that. But, you know, put your name on petitions. Maybe if we ask you via Twitter or whatever to make a call to your congressperson, do it and then move on with your lives. We just need the numbers. Essentially, mm. we need more people to just kind of not pick up the heavy load, but just kind of march along with us. Just and, engage with the um, machine. Right, and just yeah. let them know, because without the numbers, there's nothing. We yeah. and, and media will continue to um, uh, to ignore us. So <laughs> it's hurting our people. We won't be silent anymore. Um, so, yeah, and this is, I think I was there. This is uh, us in front of the Supreme Court. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it last year? No, two years ago. And so some of these are the speakers and they're singing. Cool. I've shared uh, some of their music before. It's just really stunning um, and moving. And then mm -hmm. there's a whole list of resources on the back. Not only that, they did it for Nebraska, too. I won't bore you but for every state and we were able oh, yeah. to, they put together packets and for every uh, Senator and representative that we visited, we had a packet to That's give to brilliant. them with all the facts and figures for both national and state. That is um, brilliant. So they've got, uh, I know. they've got specific information got, uh, based on the, the state's problems. Yes. And we, we haven't got like, anything like that here. Well, it came from, I was sitting at dinner with uh, uh, another Kelly, uh, uh, poor people's campaign person from New York State. Oh. And this was the template. And it is amazing. They, their state put this together. This is state of the state. 
this was put out the same at the exact same time as their governor um presented his state her state of the state speech in 2023 and so it's just got loads of facts and personal stories and it's amazing so this was the template and she gave me a copy because um i think we might do something beefed up like this in in nebraska as well mm. but if you're in nebraska get to the poor people's campaign and check it out it's a it's a wealth of excellent knowledge so and it's you know these studies and stuff aren't usually framed with a perspective of supporting the poor and so i encourage you to do that um let's see so we've got um god there was so much education um reverend barber was quite moving wow. and he uh he went into the history i think i'll do that in a minute I'll go back to my keynote plane. Can you see that okay? There is not enough space to save this document to iCloud. Oh, that's true too. Let me turn <laughs> it. Yes, I'm dealing with that as well. Um, yeah. Let me try it again. I don't see. Um, like I said, Reverend Barber went into uh, a lot of history. It was amazing. Um but uh, one of the more interesting things he went in depth into was uh, state constitutions of before um, before the Civil War. Um, many were more inclusive and supported equality and a more supportive government than our national constitution. And one example of that that I wrote down in my notes, so I have it, um, was, uh, and of course, Reverend Will William Barber is uh, from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the North Carolina Constitution pre-1872 um, said, you know how our national constitution said, um, uh, all, all, all men are created equal. Yeah. I mean, it, it should sound familiar. I, I, I can't do the whole thing right now. I'm playing off the cuff. So, but um, the North Carolina Constitution pre-1872 said all persons are created equal. All persons. That's very good. Now that, that includes Black people. And women. And women. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> yeah. what were they How, dare we, How dare we be so debauched uh, to accept women into democracy? How I know. dare we? But so, so it, 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 this is possible. It just, that blew my mind. And he went into more, of course, I only wrote down so much. Another, uh, uh, let me see. In 1850, this is just another factoid. In 1854, um, Social Security was available. And I don't know how long before Social Security was put into place, but it only was for landed people, people that had land. Yeah. Um, I am not sure if that, in, I'm, don't, I'm almost positive it didn't include win, women, but um, in 1854, uh, Four, a case was brought uh, agricultural people got together and advocated to be included in Social Security. And so it wasn't until that landmark case that, and I don't have the case specifics, but um, they were granted access to Social Security. So, I mean, that's a huge change. Um, just imagine, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so it just kind of gave me some idea of, of what, you know, getting together and fighting can do. Um, let me see. We they talked about the first reconstruction, um, 1865 to 1896. They had, re re uh, uh, you know, the first reconstruction. And uh, Reverend Barber's word said, oh, then we realized that Black people were, had been bamboozled. And so um, they, you know, toward the end of Reconstruction, I mean, it turned into 
you know, Jim Crow and all that. Mm. Um, trying not to jump around here. Um, the first uh, March on Washington. I thought this was interesting. Um, you know, we think of the March on Wa Washington in uh, 1963, you know, um, and uh, with uh, Martin Luther King Jr. But the first one, it was proposed by A. Philip Randolph during the Roosevelt administration. So this has been a long fight. And uh, I thought that was really interesting. Um, second Reconstruction uh, began. Um, he 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 uh, he put that on a pretty specific date, and that was the date that Emmett Till's mom decided to have an open casket. And yeah, I thought I thought that was pretty moving. So, yeah. um, but that was 1955, and uh, so the civil rights era. You know, we think 1960s, but he he kind of tags that that momentum starting in 1955 with the funeral Emmett Till. Emmett Till. Yeah. right 14 year old boy Lynch. Yeah. uh let's see what else do i have oh yeah and it still goes on I and mean, people don't even hear about modern lynching um and it goes on yeah okay i'm gonna move on let's see what we've got next um, there was a uh, constitutional lawyer. Her name was Valerie. There were actually two consti two lawyers on the po uh, stage at this time. They were both named Valerie, but I don't have her last name. Um, but she did say we live in an impoverished democracy, and it's our duty to work to abolish this. Um, and it's government's job to provide for the people, which is, you know, really important, but we're not there. We have to just get used to the fact that we our government is really not working. Um, you know, we are told so many lies um, and we have to educate beyond these lies and uh, um, undo them and fight them. And uh, and we need to, as a country, stop hiding behind American exceptionalism. Well, that's how the every country gets its populace to be distracted there's the flag here's mm. the army we're the best where it's all fine don't look under the carpet right <laughs> you know right um the, well, the government, the government also is working. working it's just not working for the poor it's working it's for the rich for yeah. it's working perfectly fine it's for working for who it's designed to work for <laughs> right right so, yeah, let's see. Oh, okay. This is uh, the visits. And I did just, I had pictures of um, us meeting with staffers in other offices. I took those out because I, un understanding this is going out on YouTube, I do not have um, permission from everybody yeah. to um, show their pictures. So as far as our dele Nebraska delegation, um, I guess there's some kind of lottery for senators um, after you've been there a while, and uh, sometimes you win the lottery and get the corner office that is so gorgeous. <laughs> this is Senator Deb Fisher's office. This is one of my senators. Mm -hmm. And we did stop in and um, hand over our material, talk with the young staffers in there. Um, before this, we had, uh, we talked with Representative Don Bacon. He is my representative um and sat down with his staffer um for quite a while and he listened um you know um many of us talked about um going without food um need for snap snap is uh, a way if you're you have to be desperately desperately poor to get um access to food through snap mm -hmm. um and there's a, a cutoff. Let's this one uh, young woman. She had to. She had to re uh, reject a fifty and fifty cent an hour raise 
uh, on her, her job because she would have um, lost a, like four times more amount of money worth of food if she had accepted the raise because she would no longer be eligible for SNAP. And so it's keeping her, you know, and um, I will show uh, a newscast in, um, with her uh in a few in a moment oh i guess oh i had to take out the other um the other uh photos i had of the other but we went we visited um don bacon representative don bacon and then uh deb fisher and uh, senator pete ricketts and so pete ricketts can you see me pete ricketts well, his office gave us this. So we could take beef jerky or beef chicks. So Omaha steaks, everybody. That's what we left with instead <laughs> of better policy. Not happy? Is he his own commission? No kidding. And my husband, I showed my husband this tonight and he said, well, you know, the Simons that started this company, they're heavy Democratic donors. So who knows? Anyway, it's all just politics. They're the same anyway, anymore. But I thought that was funny um, that we all walked out smelling like beef jerky. And, um, <laughs> beef jerky time. Yeah, they were all my my comrades were all just eating it up as we left. It had been a long day. So I thought that was funny. But um, let me see. One of our staff actually jetted down to um visit Bernie Sanders, uh, which I thought was great. He was not in the office at the time, um, but uh, that was pretty wonderful. As we were moving from building to building, um, there's a tunnel sy system underneath the Capitol and the Russell building and all those different office buildings. And so we're walking and we get to a place where there are elevators and I see this gaggle of suits and one guy in a track suit kind of sweat outfit workout outfit and they're getting in the elevator and I recognize the guy in the sweat outfit and I was kind of like um kind of proclaimed it was Adam Schiff oh and I and I know a few years ago he was doing like meetings on zoom with um healthcare medicare for all sort of thing um really working hard on it so I I yelled thanks for all your work on healthcare Mr Mr Schiff um Senator Schiff Adam Schiff oh representative Schiff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like a schoolgirl, I guess, but um, he got the message and he nodded and he was very sweet. So that was pretty cool. Who else, I, who else did I next, see? Next time, just call him Schiffmeister. He yeah. 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 Oh, Schiff but, um, yeah, and he's from California, I believe. So um, that was pretty yes. cool. Uh, he's okay. my rep. Uh, oh. Okay. And then um, I, as far as citing citing other people we would know um Rashida Tlaib actually came and I saw her walking down in front of the Supreme Court and she was waving at everybody of course um let me see it was yesterday on the house um the poor people's campaign um kind of like demand for a third reconstruction um was read um on the house floor uh it was brought by barbara lee mm -hmm. and i don't have the hr number yet um but uh uh yeah and so that's kind of great this is the second time it will have been brought uh to the house um so there we go we're working hard um let's see let me oh wait Pro, and there you go. There you go. yeah, and I am I am not a political player or an organizer, and I think my career is done going to DC <laughs> after this. But um, <laughs> we had uh, a bunch of uh, speeches and uh, poverty affected people speak in front of the Supreme Court, um, and then from the Supreme Court. 
Um, in fact, uh, a fellow Nebraskan spoke um, in front of the Supreme Court and her case was so moving. Um, she's the one that, um, you know, could not take that raise, um, just really difficult life. And it was quite moving what she said. And Reverend Barber, uh, you know, I, I don't want to turn people into cult you know, status or anything like that. He's just a person, but he was so moved by what uh, she said that he took off his stole and put it on her. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this is us walking from the Supreme Court over to where there was a press conference. So, um, but we're, we're all along mm -hmm. there. Yeah, there were seven, about 700 of us in total. That's cool, man. Yeah, I didn't want to show her face, but this is the stole that's around her. Yeah. Um, that's Reverend Barber's stole. So, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, man, really cool. Yeah. Oh, this is, okay, I'm going backwards. This is uh, the Supreme Court before we walked in front of the Capitol. So... Couldn't see the speakers, but we weren't allowed to get on the steps. Mm. Let's see. And then this one. Oh, I can't read it, but you can. <laughs> Since 9 had... 11, the U.S. has spent over $20, 20 trillion dollars on war. We demand a moral budget. We yes. won't be silent anymore. Yes. Thank you, Lane. You guys, I have I have everybody's um, tile in front of part of my screen. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's a top of uh, when you share stuff. Oh, oh, I missed one. Okay. There was also a picture of um, I'll just describe it to you all. This is my blender. In front of about four different representatives' offices, there was a Cuba Libre sign. And it had the Cuban flag and the American flag, like shaking hands. And I was so excited. I had my picture taken in front of it. I thought it meant end the sanctions. End the sanctions. You know, let these people just live. Um, because we are causing poverty in their country. But my husband tells me that that means end the communist regime. And turn them over to capitalism. Well, there so, you, go. you know, you guys are the pros, but whatever Cuba Libre means beyond the rum and coke reference, I don't know. <laughs> but that's up for debate. Um, let's see, what else have I got? Oh, oh, I have one more thing to share with you. Um, this was a newscast. Um that was done while we were there. Of poor people's campaign leaders from across the country are joining together at the U.S. Capitol this week to draw attention to poverty in America. The three-day campaign is aimed at bringing together poor and low-wealth people along with faith leaders from across the United States. They're demanding Angela, that poverty be addressed by lawmakers. 626,000 uh, people in Nebraska are poor or low income. That's about a third of the population of Nebraska household with two adults and two children, such as my own, needs over $23 an hour um, to meet their basic needs. Volunteers with the campaign say hundreds of thousands of Americans are being kicked off of Medicaid. Child poverty is rising, they say, and the federal minimum wage hasn't risen in nearly 14 years. They say that's what's led poverty to be the fourth leading cause of death in America. The campaign's Nebraska leaders are planning to meet with our congressmen. I think everybody yeah. else was squinting to see if we could see you in the video there. Though. <laughs> I, yeah, I was not in that picture. There were thousands and thousands. That's from uh, last year, the Moral March on Washington. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's all I have. I do appreciate everybody listening and allowing me to share. Um, yeah, it was quite an event. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you for sharing. It was really, you, you're often very inspiring because you're actually getting out there and doing stuff. Yeah. Um, Even though by I don't know what I'm doing. You're a leader. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much.
um, models. Yeah, and then I'll I'll go ahead and um, put the Poor People's Campaign links in uh, on the YouTube show and in on Discord. Um, and I'll put where you can find your own state delegation, even if you just get on, follow them on Twitter and do what they ask every once in a while. That's enough. That's enough. And uh, I know we're all fighting our smaller, smaller battles, um, you know, as far as, but, but poverty compared to the general poverty battle. Um, I mean, nobody's battle is small, but um, if you're, um, I'm just humbly asking everybody to take the time and, and uh, mm. um, put your voice along with ours. Thanks. Wow.